Hello and welcome back to our webcast series on the topic of salts and contact. In this video we're going to look at how to use the locus or loci method to solve questions where we have a solid um, to be placed against an original solid and we don't know the radius or the size of this new solid. So just to, by way of background we're going to look at what a locus or a loci actually is. So if we look at our example here of a football resting against the ground, so an example we've seen in our previous video um, we remember that the circle that we have here for our football and the uh, line for our ground, um, the relationship between the two was the centre of our circle is perpendicular off the ground through our point of contact and it's the radius off of the ground. And you remember from our previous video that if we were to kick that along the ground, the path that our centre takes is this line here. And that's what's known as a locus. The locus basically is the path that um, our object takes if it meets a certain condition. So the condition that we have in this case is that our circle is always in contact tangentially with the ground. So if I was to take a number of samples of circles with the same size, if as long as it has its centre on my locus here, then it has to be in contact tangentially with the ground. So that's what a locus is. What a loci is, is basically more than one locus. So you have one locus, you have two loci. So we're going to have a look at how to put that into a question and that we might be facing. So here we have a sphere and we have it in 3D and here we have it in 2D, elevation and plan. And on that sphere we have a point of contact which is going to be the point of contact with a new sphere um, that's going to be in contact with our original sphere and the horizontal plane. So they're the conditions that we have to work with. Our new sphere has to be in contact with the horizontal plane, has to be in contact with the sphere, and it has to be through this point of contact that we're given in the question. And from our previous videos, you know that because the point of contact is on the extreme generator, we know that the solution is automatically going to be seen in a side-by-side -side position. So we're going to look and see how are we going to find the size of this new sphere to go in place. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our point of contact as a form of checker. And in a case where you're using loci, you're generally going to have one condition which you're going to use to check to see if um, what you're doing is right or not, if the solution you have is the correct solution or not. So how we use this, in this our point of contact in this example is we take our center, join it through our point of contact, and we know from our previous videos that our centre has to be somewhere along this line. So the solution I'm looking for has to have its centre on this line here. So that's our checker condition. Um, the idea of our locus method then is basically taking a series of samples um, to um, investigate or put to the test um, each of our conditions. So if we look at um, the conditions individually, we know that our new solid has to be in contact with our original sphere. So I'm going to put a solid up here, I'm going to roll them around the edge. So as long as our centre is on this um, arc here, he's going to be in contact with the likes of our original sphere. So we can pick any size really. So radius 5 millimetres, say for this first sphere. We also know that our sphere has to be in contact with the horizontal plane. So if I come up my 5 millimetres and roll them along the ground, we can see for as long as he's along this line here, he's going to be in contact with the horizontal plane. So where the two meet, then is a sphere of radius 5 millimetres in contact with my original sphere and the horizontal plane. And is this the answer to my question? Well, because it's not on this line here, my checker line, well, it can't be. So, close, it beats, this meets two of our conditions, but not the third. So what we do then is we take a second sample. We take maybe, say, radius 10 mil. And again, we roll him along, so he's in contact with the edge of our sphere. We roll him along the horizontal plane, so he's in contact with the horizontal plane. With two cross, is our common point between the two conditions. And again, because he's not on our checker line like so, it's not our final solution. So again, we take a third sample. So radius 15 along the sphere, radius 15 along the ground. And again, this time it's too far. But here's where our locus method comes in. What we do is we join up each of those points. And in fact, I can join it right back to the very base of my sphere here. And what that is, that's our locus, that for every possible sphere that's to be in contact with our original sphere and the horizontal plane, it must have its centre on this arc here, because that's where we got this um, curve from three samples. So we're generalising um, into a general um, like formula or general um, trend. 
So if you can imagine a small sphere expanding up, you can see no matter where it is, as long as it's in contact with the edge of our sphere and the horizontal plane, it has to have its centre on that um, curve like so. So if that's the case, well we already know that our answer has to be along this line here. So we can see where the two cross, that gives us our final um, solution. So the radius from our centre here to our point of contact um, gives us the size of our sphere. And that's it completed in elevation. We're able to bring it down then to our plan view. So we know centre to our point of contact and that's going to give us our location for our sphere. So that's our question solved when we have a sphere of unknown size in contact with an original sphere. We're going to do exactly the same here where we have a cone. So we have an edge of our cone like so and we have a horizontal plane. We're going to do the same approach. We have our checker line. This time it's a, a line perpendicular from our point of contact. So we're still using our point of contact to allow us to check our answers. So we can come up maybe 5 mil off the horizontal plane. Draw our locus there. Come out 5 millimeters from the edge of our cone. We can see checking it against our point of contact. That's not the answer. So we do the same again. 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters here. And again, oh, we're close but we're not quite there. And then we do... 15 millimeters. So, and the size of the spheres that you use will vary depending on the size of the question that you want to do. But we have to have at least three. That's very important because any more, if we have any less than three, we won't know what the trend is. I mean, in this case here, um, our locus is actually a straight line. In our previous example, it was a curve. So, you have to have a minimum of three points in order to determine if it's a straight edge or if it's a curve. So, here we have our locus. And again, any circle or any sphere with its centre on this line here, if it's in contact with the horizontal plane, it has to be in contact with the edge of our cone like so. Likewise, we have our checker point of contact like so. And that means that our answer, as you expand up, has to stop where it meets our point here. So that's our centre. There's our radius then from there back to our point of contact. And we're able to draw in our sphere. So our sphere is drawn in, we can just draw it in elevation and then we can just bring it down, project it down to our plan view. And one little thing with this one, I'm just going to take a closer look at it. If we look at this, um, a little bit bigger, so just a little bit closer. If we look at this locus that we have here, which we've gotten from our three samples, um, a handy little shortcut, if you investigate that a little bit closer, we'll find that the angle from this side to the our first edge, at the edge of our cone, and the angle from our, our line here to the horizontal plane is actually equal, which means that this line here is the bisector of this total angle here, which means it's, it's half the angle. So we actually can use that um, approach as a shortcut. Rather than taking our three samples, we can just go and bisect the angle here and give us our locus. Um, so to if, just if you can't remember how to do that, the way we do it is we take where the two lines meet, the edge of our cone and the horizontal plane, and we set up our compass and swing an arc. And where our arc cuts our edge of our cone, we swing a second arc, and then where it meets the horizontal plane, we swing a third arc, and as long as the arcs are the same size, it's going to give us the bisector like so. So that's our bisector found, and like we had seen before, our point of contact continued out will give us the centre for our sphere, and then which we project down to plan, giving us the solution in plan view. So that's just a handy little shortcut um, using our locus method. So we actually know that the locus has to be the bisector of the two. So that's our locus method um, hopefully introduced. So as always, um, uh, stay tuned to the rest of the videos for more information. Um, thank you very much.